out of this big head. Lock it at your door. What you gonna do when you're next to Ken? Find you dead on the floor. Where I'm from, don't nobody wear no crown bling bling. They trying not to drown and the birds don't sing. They live simple, call it plain. It's the only way they ride. All messed up in the brain and it ain't no place to hide. My addiction caused me to lose, first of all, my self-respect for myself. I'm, uh, the love of my family. Um, lots of jobs, relationships, a lot of friendships and um, just my dignity. Ain't nobody trying to brag about the things that they got, how they pushing that's a jag in their pocket keep a knife. That can get you robbed, people starving in my hood. It's hard to get a job, and ain't nobody doing good. Boy, you're going to be something, you know. You're going to get smart in school. And, but I, as a kid, I grew up, man, and when I first ventured out to go over somebody's house, what I saw was pimping and hoeing. Nobody got no cash, the shop till they drop. On my streets, people crash. Every day someone get popped. Ain't no house up the hill. People trying to just survive. Ain't got no loot to pay the bill, but only they got five. One of the things that I always had a concern with is when young people talk about, I can do 10 years in jail standing on my head. And the first thing I say, well, can your mom do it? Can your sister do it? Can your significant other or wife do it? And certainly, can your kids? Your son get big, and you don't even look the same. Man, that's your kid, and you don't even know his name. And in most of our cases, it wasn't nobody there in our home, a man figure, like Keith was saying, to give it to us. So we grasped it to the streets, you understand? We grasped it to what we seen, what we knew. We grasped it to the dope man, you know, the players, the pimp. That's what we seen, it, and it became a norm. It's an insane way of thinking. I know it sound hard, easy said than done, but to the yard, you don't have to freaking run. Step back, take a look, and see what it's doing to your life. Man, it's got you hooked and got you lying to your wife. I felt like I'm worthless. You know, I'm worth nothing. Every time people see me coming, they running away from me. Or they making excuses not to be around me. I mean, I was a thief, con man, a uh, uh, habitual liar. I mean, I thought I was slick, talking my way out of these things, but not realizing that that person know I'm lying. Man, you lost your mind, and then you mouth to keep a pipe. Stay in a bind, and out you about to strike. Now you need to put the glass, alone and leave that smack. Keep going up, it pass. Your life and take it back. We all have something in common. We have done some kind of drug, one way or the other that have made our lives unmanageable. That we couldn't think right. Our whole process was just screwed to hell. But now that we came in and admitted to ourselves that we were powerless against these drugs, our thinking process is starting to come back now. My name is Wardell and I'm a uh, recovering addict. Hey, hey Wardell. Uh, what brought me here was I'm addicted to crack, man. I'm addicted to the streets. I'm going to lead to women, and uh, I've been in jail since 1991 on and off. I haven't seen the summer since 2000 this time, and I'm here to try to break that cycle, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a cycle with jail, drugs, institutions. I've been in treatment four or five times. If I ain't in jail, I'm in treatment. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard, man. But I'm definitely, definitely not giving up on myself. I'm going to keep fighting, man. I'm going to keep my head up, man. I'm going to stay strong. I, too, been through this program a few times. And uh, when I came here, man, I had tears in my eyes because I was scared. It's just about to be another one of them in and out episodes. Uh, why didn't it work the last time? What really need to be done this time? Because I don't want to never go back to where I was. I don't never want to be that person I was, you know. And then um, I was talking to, I'm dealing with this therapist lady, and, and, and I was sharing to her about some things that I went through as a child, bro. And she was telling me, you know, she said, well, 
You know, she diagnosed me on the fears, the insecurities, the low self-esteem, you know, the fear of fitting in and all these things. See, them the things that was directing my life for years and years and years, way before drugs and alcohol came in the picture. This lady tell me that I got to grow up from six years old because she said, actually, it was wrong with them people but you stop growing to who God really wants you to be at six. You start being who they told you to be. You start developing these low self-esteem and fears from six years old. And the woman made me write a letter to that six-year-old little boy. She said, I want you to get in touch with him. And if you were stand, if he was standing there right in front of you, what would you tell him? Say, bro, I, I took two days to before I even attempt to put anything on paper. And when I started writing, I was crying. I was seeing that six year old boy, bro, that they was just abusing, you know, physically, sexually, mentally, all kind of ways. And I was trying to see what could I tell that little boy, you know, to try to make shit all right with this man. Because that's where it started at. <sighs> But that's why I'm talking about this right now, because that lady told me I got to do this, not be afraid to say what's going on with me, you know? And I'm trying to heal, get this healing process, because my time running short. And sooner or later, I got to go back out there in that world. And Lord knows, like I said, got to be a different way. The bottom line is trust. And so as a young man, a young woman, old man, old woman, you're going through treatment, you've got to decide, are you going to trust the process to make you a better person, which means that you will definitely be different. You cannot be sober and not using and be the same person.